Greetings, unsettled souls, and a welcome to the correct views. Sam I.B. DeGange doing political commentary for the media speaks. No, I'm not a reporter. I'm not an anchorman. I don't have to cut my hair to look like a reporter. I'm a political commentator. I get some of the dumbest comments, which is perfect for me to address right now, since we do, in fact, have the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, everybody's favorite show. For those of you new to the broadcast, it's where we highlight the ultimate stupidity within our society. Usually, and I'm sure there won't be much of a surprise here, it's our leaders or people that are in charge of telling us their brilliance about how we should live. Well, what's the first one? Um, officials, a student's gender identity and determines restroom use. How about if you were born with a Y chromosome, you're guy, and you go into the guy's restroom? But I don't feel like a guy. Then sit down when you pee in the men's restroom. I'm dead serious. Um, Associated Press the U.S. Justice Department says in a court filing that transgender students must be allowed to use the restroom that corresponds with their gender identity. The department says in a statement of interest filed Monday that failure to do so amounts to sex discrimination under Title IX of the U.S. Education Amendments of 1972. To quote Paul Joseph Watson, if you feel like a hippopotamus on Saturday, it does not mean that you are, in fact, a hippopotamus. It just means that you're a human that feels like a hippopotamus. The document is in response to a federal lawsuit filed against the Gloucester County School Board by a 16-year-old transgender student who wants to be allowed to use the boys' restroom. Um, does said student have Y chromosome? If not, then no matter how they feel, they can't use that restroom. Does that sound callous? Welcome to the correct views. I didn't say it was popular views. I said it was correct. The lawsuit says Gavin Grimm used the, com the communal restrooms without incident until the board adopted a policy in December requiring transgender students to use a private facility. So they gave the confused kids their own bathroom, but that wasn't good enough for them. No, they want to encroach on the rights of everybody else that doesn't want a person of the opposite sex, no matter how they identify, in their bathroom. The lawsuit seeks unspecified damages and an order allowing Grimm to use the boys' restrooms. How many of you women, when you're on your period, yes, I'm going to go there, would really like a guy in there because he feels like a lady? This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. How many of you have kids and you would really like it if people of the opposite sex were in your kid's bathroom. Yeah, that's not going to be abused either. Not a chance. Um, <clears throat> regular viewers, a lot of these uh, shows are actually, the articles were in July. The winner is still from June because, of course, you can't give July's dunce cap out until after July is over. So now that it is July, we're doing June's. I had a massive network crash. My whole, everything I had, my, uh, my whole laptop died. So I had to get new dumdies. And a lot of the dumdies that I had saved are now in the great ether. So what I did is I covered the dumbest stories I could find up to till day, but the, the winner is still from last month. Fortunately, I already knew who was going to win as soon as I heard it. And when we get there, you'll see why. Do not tune out, I promise you. University of Wisconsin, complimenting people of color is racist. This is Paul Joseph Watson. I was talking about the hippopotamus. Uh, read the shocking list of racist behaviors being given to faculty. This is one of the dumbest things I think anybody has ever heard of. It says, do you have several black, black friends? Compliment people of color or think that America is a melting pot? Then you're a racist. That's according to the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point, who is being mentioned here at the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Examples of racial, racial microaggressions 
a list of discouraged phrases and behaviors that are being given to new faculty and staff. Am I the only person that think this sounds a lot like fascism? Does this sound like uh, Italy or Germany during the Second World War to anybody other than me? He writes, I'm not making this up. Paul Joseph Watson talks with an accent, but I can't do the kind of English accent that he is. I sort of do a different English accent. It says, this isn't a spoof or a hoax. You can visit the official University of Wisconsin website and see for yourself. I love Paul Joseph Watson. According to the University of Wisconsin, asking someone where they are from or where they were born. What's interesting is I have a very good friend. He is a editing movie genius. His name is Ivan Toe. I asked him where he was from. It was Liberia. I guess I was a racist. Never mind the fact that I love the guy. And I'm encouraging you to look up his work. Uh, tell someone that they, sp that they speak good English. Yeah, God forbid you, you really work hard to learn the English language. For those of you that don't know, it's one of the harder languages to learn if you're not associated with it uh, prior. It's very, very hard to learn. And uh, no, don't compliment anybody on that. I guess I'm double racist because Ivan Toe speaks remarkable English. Telling someone that you have several black friends, I guess you're supposed to keep it a secret. Saying that you're not a racist, I guess you're supposed to say that you are a racist. Complimenting an Asian person by telling them that they are very articulate. I guess you're supposed to tell them that they're stupid. I, I have no idea what in the world. Um, you speak terrible. Uh, I don't know. Asking an Asian person for help with science or math. I asked everybody for help with science and math when I was in school. Asian African American, I might not, they might not have even been human. I was asking like amoebas for help when I was in college, so that doesn't make any sense. Uttering the phrase, there is only one race, the human race, yeah, and God forbid you'd speak anything that, you know, is scientific fact. Um, other words, maybe you'll believe that there isn't just one race. You know who didn't believe that? Adolf Hitler. That's why he killed so many people of other races, was because he didn't believe that we were all one race. Therefore, according to Wisconsin, Adolf Hitler was not a racist. A dumbest thing I've ever said. I didn't say I agreed with it. It's why it's on the Dunce Cap of the Month show. I don't agree with it. Uh, saying that you think America is a melting pot and that when you look at someone, you don't see race. Well, I guess you're supposed to look at them, say, I don't think it's a melting pot, and slur them. Okay. I've got Italian in me, I guess, fire away. Believing that the most qualified person, regardless of race, should get the job. No, I think the most unqualified person should. I wouldn't want to be a racist. Uh, thinking that every person, regardless of race, can succeed in society if they work hard enough. Well, I don't believe that at all. <laughs> I, I, I don't believe that at all. I think it's set up against us, actually. I don't believe that regardless of what race you are, if you work very hard, it's likely to do a damn thing, actually. Uh, telling a black person who is being too loud to be quiet, I guess you're supposed to assume that every black person is loud. Telling an Asian or Latino person who is too quiet to speak up, that's because there's never been any great loud Asian heavy metal bands like Loudness. They're even named Loudness? I guess they hated themselves? I don't know. Um, mistaking a person of color for a staff member when you're in a store. I guess you're supposed to assume that the store doesn't hire people of color. Um, calling something gay. What if it is gay? Uh, doing an impersonation of someone's dialect or accent. Oh my God, I slandered Paul Joseph Watson before I even started reporting on his article. I suck. Friends, if you don't make fun of it, what else are you going to do? Well, I'll tell you one thing you could do that would make me very, very happy. Contact the University of Wisconsin. Let them know that you heard about this insanity and let them know how stupid you think it actually is. That's why I'm here speaking into our camera, friends. Moving on to protected classes, as it were. Jim Hoft, Gateway Pundit. They're not on the show a lot. Welcome aboard, Gateway Pundit. Fake hate, a gay man faked a robbery beating and carved anti-gay slur into his own arm. 
I told you it was the dunce cap of the month show. I told you that we had idiots coming. I had to make up for the idiots I lost. And oh my God. And again, these are the ones that are not going to win for July. So imagine how stupid the ones that are winning are. I'm still on the fence about Wisconsin. I maybe should have saved them for their own hat. Um, 22-year-old Rick Jones claimed that he was beaten, robbed, and had an anti-gay slur carved into his arm. But if I impersonate the maid that he might have talked, it's going to make me like, you know, a racist. The criminals carved die fag into Rick's arm. And for those of you that don't know, I have absolutely no care in the whole world what sexual preference you are. I just hate political correctness. It says it's all a hoax. Rick Jones faked the attack and carved die fag into his own arm. The AP reported. The man who reported someone beat him and carved a homophobic slur into his arm staged the attacks, authorities in rural Utah said Tuesday. Millard County Sheriff Robert Decker and Rick Jones, 21, could face charges after officers investigating a series of reported attacks found inconsistencies in the evidence. <laughs> the Delta man eventually acknowledged faking the harassment, Decker said. By the way, feel free to make fun of me in my comment line. I didn't. <laughs> I have people doing it all the time. I, unless they harass other listeners, I, I leave them. And I've had some crap said about me. Again, it's, it's not about offending somebody in the real world. Like, I don't want you to be offended when you listen to this. Make fun of me. I don't care. We are being forced to lose our First Amendment rights and... We got people desecrating themselves for some great cause that doesn't need to happen when there's more important things in the world. That's what I'm saying. Being as real as can be, I, I don't care how somebody talks. I don't care how they look. I don't care what color they are. I don't care who they're sleeping with. And I hope they don't care who I'm sleeping with. Point is, and all gay people, I think, with a common ounce of brains would agree with me that this has simply gone too far. It says, uh, the Delta man eventually acknowledged to faking the harassment. Brett Tolman, an attorney for Jones, said the reports were a cry for help. Initially directed toward people close to him, and Jones didn't realize how much attention they would get. I think it's such good evidence of the difficulties members of the gay community deal with. And some make better choices than others. Yeah, some end up on the dunce cap of the month award show guys if you're wondering what in the world you're listening to you are listening to the correct views uh mike mclaughlin look him up on uh facebook.com mike um mclaughlin he writes some of the best fiction and political commentary extant today make sure you go make sure you look him up and let him know hey mike mike mclaughlin i heard about you from the correct views Despite Whataburger's anti-gun policy, violent crime surges at stores. Now, before I get into this, I have another another story. It might be because I'm in Ohio and we don't have them there. What, what in the hell is a Whataburger? I guess that there are um, a chain of these everywhere but Ohio, because I've, I've absolutely never heard of it in my life. But that, that's neither here nor there. I guess they're famous where they are. Kit Daniels and Alan Salazar Infowars. What a burger who gets mentioned here at the Dunce Cap of the Month Awards show. Their CEO lashed out against the new open carry handgun law in Texas, despite the routine violence inside his restaurants. I noticed that Kit and Adam here write open carry in parentheses. It should be new that's in parentheses. Against the new open carry handgun. No, it's the Second Amendment. It's actually new that should be in parentheses. It says, in the latest incident, a Whataburger customer was assaulted by two men who brought him down to the ground and kicked him several times inside the Edinburgh, Texas Whataburger on June 26th. Just two months ago in Dallas, Texas Whataburger was the site of a mass shooting when a man fired a stolen gun into a crowd of hundreds of people in front of the restaurant. Also, earlier in January, a Florida man was shot and killed in a drive through lane at a Fleming Island Whataburger during the altercation. There's a bunch of links in this. So it sounds like it may be a nice place to be able to protect yourself, don't you think? Well, despite all of these incidents, Whataburger's CEO, who's being mentioned as one of our dumdies, Preston Atkinson, dumdy, published a press release telling customers not to carry guns openly in their stores out of respect for customers who are uncomfortable 
being around someone with visible firearm who is not a member of law enforcement. But feel free to use whatever bathroom you want. It says from a business standpoint, though, we have to think about how open carry impacts our 34,000 plus employees and millions of customers, he wrote. We serve customers from all walks of life at more than 780 locations 24 hours a day in 10 states, not Ohio, and we're known for family-friendly atmospheres that customers have come to expect from us. While I think it would be family-friendly to have your average responsible dad armed, or mother, that's not what I mean, your average parent armed, then it would be to have them not armed when the lunatic comes in with the gun. Do you notice that all these things happening in schools. Why? Because you can't arm yourself in a school yet. Do you want to know why they, they ran out of this problem in other places like airplanes and that? Because some pilots, if, if it's a smaller plane and they don't have a door between the two, they may have a gun and they will pop you. That's why it stopped. You don't walk up against somebody if you know that they're armed. If you don't have anybody responsible with guns there and you bar responsible people from having guns there, then what you have done is invited every criminal with a gun to go there and use said gun against the customers, who they know, by the rules of the establishment, have no way to defend themselves. That's how you put a target on yourself. That's why you're on the Dunce Cap of the Month award show. It says we're a gathering spot for little league teams, church groups, and high school kids after football games. What does that mean? If you want to really slaughter innocent people who are unarmed, please eat here. I feel really bad for the little league teams, church groups, and high school kids after football games that go there. To be fair, Atkinson said the company hasn't prohibited licensed concealed carry, but he's also suggesting the feelings of soccer moms. Who freak out at the sight of a gun is more important than the rights of a law-abiding citizen who can legally open carry for his personal defense now in Texas, which is a ridiculous claim considering the criminals routinely avoid armed citizens. Did you hear that? If not, rewind. Avoid attacking armed citizens. Most criminals do. What's going to freak out a soccer mom more? A responsible man with a gun? A responsible woman with a gun? Or a criminal who shoots her kid with nobody there to help him? It seems to me that we should offend him or her with the law-abiding citizen with the gun. Dead children are much more shocking than a responsible person with a gun. Anybody hear me? It says, supporting the Second Amendment shouldn't stop short of open carry. Gun owners shouldn't be treated as lepers who are expected to hide their firearms from an overly emotional public. The Second Amendment will only get the respect that it deserves once people are used to seeing guns in public and realize that they don't need to jump out of the way of a holstered gun just as they don't need to jump out of the way of an already parked car. Amen. Absolutely in every, every possible way. We got a couple more stories to get to. We got more dumdies. Chuck Schumer, who is always on the wrong side of history, friends. You got to hear about him. You're going to hear about him because of Sticker Junkie. Sticker Junkie, they made these amazing stickers. What do I want you to do? You go to StickerJunkie.com. Use whatever artistic ability you have and look at the amazing stickers that you get. When you place your order, make sure that you let David Lake know that you heard about it at the correct views because you're going to get a discount. Schumer Chuck Schumer, as uh, Michael Savage says, as Schumer calls for ban on gun-shaped iPhone cases. Yes, we live in a world where our food is not tested from Fukushima. We live in a world where um, crime is being treated as something that will go away if you take guns away from people that aren't criminals. We have all kinds of problems with the economy. We all know we're headed for some kind of a crash. We got Greece leaving the Eurozone. Nope. Senator Chuck Schumer is raising alarm about the sale of iPhone cases that are made to look like the handle of a 9mm handgun. Never mind that the other end of it looks like the sticker from Sticker Junkie. It looks nothing like a gun at all. 
thus proving that part of the problem in the world, in fact, is people like Chuck Schumer. How he continues to end up in office, I'll never know. And friends, you know what that brings us to. Christelle, I'm going to need you so that people can see the award. You guys know, here comes, right? Oh, yes. I usually use the Fraggle song, but I loaded the wrong one, so we'll go with it. That brings us to the Dunce Cap of the Month winner, which you're going to get to hear about right here. Uh, it is pretty dumb. I can't play much of that or they won't let me monetize the video. They are that picky. Um, the Dunce Cap of the Month, like I said, I knew what it was going to be as soon as I heard of it. It was nothing else that it could be. 11-year-old boy kidnapped by CPS parents arrested after he played in the backyard alone for 90 minutes. That would be an hour and a half for you Kesha fans. Must attend the therapy and state-mandated day camp. Steve Watson, InfoWars, dated June 11th, 2015, so it counts. A couple in Florida were arrested and charged with felony neglect after their 11-year-old son was left home alone in the backyard playing basketball for 90 minutes. Furthermore, the child was taken from the parents and placed into foster care. The remarkable story was related to the website Free Range Kids, which advocates raising children to be self-reliant rather than succumbing to the nanny state. Um... I can understand both sides of this because my mom was a little bit too protective. My dad was protective about weird things. And I remember thinking, I'm not going to know how to do anything for myself if they don't quit doing it. Like, you had to check in every hour. I was like 14 falling on a ramp. The ramp is 20 minutes away. If I have to check in every hour, I might as well even go to the damn ramp. So finally they got to the point where, I was a thrasher by the way, still am, although I, I'm no good at it anymore. I wasn't that good at it then. Um, rather than, you know, make it so impossible, they finally just, you know, said, all right, fine. Hopefully you won't get mugged on the way there. And in my neighborhood, you never knew. But you have to take chances like that. Otherwise, the kids are going to be afraid of everything that they come across. Or the opposite's going to happen. And then as soon as they get out of the house, they're going to use crack and become a Satanist. And you know, sacrifice cats or something. You know, they, they go off the deep end. I'm being facetious, but you know what I mean. It says the boy found himself locked out of the family home in April after his parents became stuck in traffic. Yeah, they, you know, they're just terrible parents. God forbid traffic, you know irresponsibility. A busybody neighbor decided that this was far too dangerous and called the cops. Now, can anybody tell me what the hell is going on in Florida? Because I can't figure out what law it is that they broke. I wish this would have been mentioned in the article because it's driving me crazy. I don't understand. I understand what happened. I don't understand how it happened. So somebody please comment line. It says, when the parents arrived home, they were put in handcuffs, strip-searched, I said strip-searched, fingerprinted, and subsequently held overnight in jail. Meanwhile, the boy and his four-year-old brother, who was not left alone at any time, were taken into the custody of police and handed over to a relative. I don't understand what law was broken here. The 11-year-old is allowed to watch the... It would be reasonable that he could watch a 4-year-old for an hour and a half. I don't have a problem with that. It wasn't like he was in charge of making his dinner, which you could argue some 11-year-olds could also do. Meanwhile, the boy and his 4-year-old... I already read that. My bad. It emerged that for 48 hours, while the handover was being sorted out, the children were only fed cereal and were not encouraged to wash. Now, see, that's even worse. After a few weeks of not being able to see their kids, it goes on, the couple discovered that the relative who was caring for them had had enough and was handing the children over to CPS, whose lawyer asked the judge to place them in foster care. In other words, the only person that did anything nefarious at all was the relative. They were left with a relative. No law broken here. If anything, that relative should be facing some kind of legal hang-up if there is to be a legal hang-up here at all, which I'm just not seeing. When the case came to court, there was a back-and-forth argument between CPS lawyer and, of course, the Florida CPS is, in fact, the winner of the Month Cap of the Month Award. 
said the family's legal representative, representative went on for hours arguing with CPS. It was only when the 11-year-old boy spoke to the judge that sanity prevailed. He went back there and spoke to the judge for about 10 minutes, the mother told Free Range Kids. Then the judge came out and called the two lawyers to the bench and talked to them for about 10 to 15 minutes. With that, our lawyer came to us and said that if we admitted that we didn't know that it was wrong for our son to play in the backyard, there's no way in hell I would ever admit such a stupid thing because it's not. But that we know now that it's wrong and that we won't ever let it happen again, they should get the dunce cap of the month award for even saying this. Then we will explain to our son he would let the children come home with us. That's like saying if I said that blue was red and up was down and that it was good to ingest raw uranium, I will get my kids back. Makes no sense. It said the parents agreed to the terms. It hurts me to even read it. I swear to God, if I knew where their address was, I would be tempted to mail them a dunce cap. The parents agreed to the terms and were allowed to take their children home a month after the incident originally occurred. The couple are now attending mandatory parenting classes like they force on perfectly sober people that they give DUIs to. They have to have therapy and their children are getting play therapy. Play therapy! And must attend mandatory day camps throughout the summer at the behest of CPS. That's what you get, I guess, for playing basketball in your own yard. Unlike last summer, the kids will not be going to the beach or playing with their parents. I guess you can't do that either. The parents are set to battle the felony charge in criminal court and are trying to get the entire case dropped. While they shouldn't have agreed, for one thing, that makes them look guilty. It says InfoWars has previously highlighted cases like this before, and we've covered it here. All right, guys, I'm going to show you real quick because I have to, my printer died, so I'm simply going to have to take this to a printing place and get it printed. However, they all get sent. It's fact, trust me. They all get sent. I lie to not when I got to shrink this a bit. You guys are going to get to see the award that is being sent to them. Christelle can zoom in. And then I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. Now, those of you on low def, it would behoove you to go to youtube.com slash the correct views to see it. Because, uh, well, you're on the computer that I'm turning around. So there's no, absolutely no hope of, uh, of you getting to. You got it, Christelle? Uh, she's getting there. And that's it. All right, friends. Now I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. Let me also show you the cap afterwards that she has made. Uh, you're going to want to see this. It's priceless. The Dunn's Cap of the Month Award, especially for those of you on low def who don't get to see it. There's a basketball superimposed into the back. This award, rightfully earned by the utter dolts who, for reasons unclear to most, are paid to work at the Florida CPS, is given with total disdain and amazement. Rather than address cases of actual abuse, thank you, Christelle, which may or may not happen with any regularity, I wrote, in light of this, you have a family arrested and their child removed over the lad playing basketball with his brother on his own property. Without using a bit of reason or sanity, you bothered a family for playing at their own house. It is with this in mind, I wrote, that beyond all argument or contention, you at Florida earned the, dunk, the correct views, Dunce Cap of the Month award. Thank you for making the world a more miserable place just by doing what you do, idiots. Uh, I got a typo that. I'm going to have to fix it before I send it to him. You saw it still in Photoshop. And here we go, friends. You got to see her Dunce Cap. It says CPS. What's that stand for? Can't play shots. That's basketball. Of course, Dunce in great big letters. Look how evenly she wrote Dunce this month. A strip searched for getting stuck in traffic. That's right. In America today, you can get strip searched for being in traffic. Look at it. No basketball. Absolutely not forbidden. This kind of fun is not allowed. This CPS will be called, or as Pink Floyd liked to say, wrong. Do it again.
again. Thank you, friends, for listening to The Correct View. Sam I.B. DeGangi signing off with the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Now, please donate to the show if you can. You can do so at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. Guys, share the show. Don't, like, click spike it because that ends up messing up the count if you do that. But share it. Get it out there everywhere. Let people know. I do this show. Yeah, we laugh. We have a good time. At least I hope we do. But I have a good time. I do this so that stupidity that is all over the world can be called out. If one of these stories, or hopefully all of these stories, really irked you, then let the people that caused them to be a reality know it. Because if we fight back, then we can stop a lot of the stupidity that we're seeing today. Guys, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, look up the work of Kyle Court, D-Lake, and myself. I will see you Saturday at 2 p.m. at TheMediaSpeaks.com, Eastern Standard Time. Good night. God bless.